Hello, welcome to this video on Bodhichiri Avatara, chapter 7, verse 61. I'll read it without the text in front of you and then with. Mahatswapihi Kritshreshu Narasang Chakshuri Kshate Evan Kritshramapi Prapya Nakleshavashagubhavet. Now, with the text, Mahatswapihi Kritshreshu Narasang Chakshuri Kshate Evang Kritshrama Piprapya Naklesha Vashago Bhavet. So, a Kritshram means a difficulty. It's um, originally an, an adjective. It's possibly, according to the etymology, I don't think it's been finally decided, but it, it looks it looks likely. Um, from the root krish, meaning to, to scratch, um, and we know the, the word um, karshaka, for example, um, which means a farmer, because it was a, literally a scratch-up. In the old days, the farmer would scratch the the, the you know, primitive farming, primitive arable farming. Um, the ploughing would be you know, scratching the earth with a with a sharp stick. So, karshaka, which in Pali becomes kasaka, is cognate actually with our English word scratch. When it came into English, it acquired an s on on the on the front of it. Um, but for example, katzen in German, it hadn't acquired the s there. Um, and in, in the German, the uh, French rather gratter, which actually they got from the German kratzen, um, meaning to scratch, and formaggio gratinato, uh, grated cheese. This grated cheese is likely from that same root as well. So, uh, a number of um, adjectives are made from the. Let me call up the. We are. A number of adjectives are made by adding ra to the root. So we've got krish. Um, so and I better correct myself and remind you before I get too carried away with krish, meaning scratch. This krish, scratch, which is not the same as the root krish, sorry. Meaning lean. So to talk about these adjectives, we, for example, we've got the um, the root rud, meaning to roar, and we get rudra, meaning you know, roaring. The one one of the Hindu gods is known as the, the rudra, the the, the roarer. Um, we've got the root chand, uh, meaning to shine. Um, Cognate with the um, incandescent and candle, it's that, that, that same root. And we have chandra, which means shining, that which shines, and by, and by extension, um, it means the, the moon. So, krish, lean, can mean lean in a, in a bad sense, you know, starving, lack, lack of abundance, hardship. Um, and you sometimes find that the sh changes to a ch, so krichra can mean something like hard or, or, or tough, bad times, d difficult times. So used as a noun, it means hardship, so krichreshu, in hardships, in tough times. Let's get back to our, here we are. So. Kritreshu, locative plural, in hardships, in difficulties. Mahatsu, the root mahan, combining form maha, meaning great. Mahatsu, that's the masculine and neuter locative plural form. So, Mahatsu Kritreshu 
means in great difficulties or in great hardships. If you missed out the he there, Mahatsu Api Krishreshu, which of course by Santi becomes Mahatsuwa. See up here, Mahatsu Api Krishreshu. So Mahatsu Api Krishreshu, even in hardship, even in great hardship. And the he here adds a further intensifying force to it. So surely even in great difficulties. Narasam chakshur ikshate. So the chakshus in stem form chakshus is the is the eye. It seems to be a reduplicated form from the aksha, aksha meaning the eye, cognate of course with the Latin oculum, an eye is an ocular, and binoculars. So the the eye is it's a neuter noun ending in an s. So even in great hardship, narasang chakshurikshate, the chakshus becomes chakshur by santi before the following vowel. So the eye does not see taste. In other words, it's a natural impossibility. So however awful things are for you, there are some things that you simply cannot do that just by the laws of nature cannot happen. So the rasa originally meant sap or juice, and then by, by general extension, it meant taste, as in one of the five senses, the sense of taste. So the imagery here is that just as in great hardship, whatever happens to you, it's against the laws of nature for the eye uh, to be able to see a taste. It just can't happen. Evam. Krishramapi prapya neklesha vashago bhavet. Evam, thus, or in that same way, it's the same as the evam me sutam or evam maya shrutam, thus have I heard. So here it means in the same way, in the, in the same way as has just been described. Krishramapi prapya, having uh, met with this prapya, let me, um, means having got or having obtained. But it can also refer to obtaining what you don't want as well as obtaining what you what you do want. It means it could mean just coming upon, entering upon, getting. It's from the root. Let me call up iPad again. Here we are. It's from the root up, meaning to to get or obtain. It's more often than not construed with the prefix pra. So praap, of course, becomes then praap. And then the absolutive prapya, having obtained, having got, having come upon. Back to screen, back to word, here we are. So evam krishnrapi prapya, even if you have fallen into a difficulty, or even if you have encountered, even having encountered krishnram, hardship, difficulty, na kleshavasha go bhavet, kleshavasha gaha bhavet, na bhavet, that's the, um, that's the um, potential form, or the, sorry, the, or the optative, it's the same one, um, that's the present optative, one should not be klesha vashagaha. So let me analyze this klesha vashagaha. Okay, I've done it here, have I? Yeah, from the root gum. When the this root gum appears as the final member of a compound, you will almost always find that what happens is the M drops and it's treated as if the stem, as if the um, root, rather, were ga. So that's klesha vasha ga. And it is the same verb, gum, to, to, to go. And this ga form is used, it's never used on its own, and it's only ever used at the end, end of a compound. So vasha uh, means power. Um, 
iPad again. We have the word Bala and Shakti, both meaning power. Vasha means power, but in a different sense. Vasha is power in the sense of having power over something else. It's nothing to do with your internal power. It's the idea, it's, there's, a, it's a relationship aspect to it. Somebody has power over another, or some dominant emotion or vice might have power over you. So you can have power over somebody, or you can come under the power of it. So, um, Vashaga, power going, means, means coming under the power of, and you'll see it normally in a, a longer compound, as here, klesha vashagaha means affliction power, sorry, defilement power going, meaning coming under the power of the defilements. Back to text. There we are. So, Mahatsu api kritreshu, api even. Mahatsu kritreshu in great hardships, great difficulties. Chakshuho, the eye, na ikshate, does not see rasam, a taste, meaning it's against the laws of nature for the eye to be able to taste something or to see a taste. Evam, in that way, Prapya api, even having encountered krichram, a difficulty, even if you're right in the middle of a difficulty, is what it means here. Na bhavet, one should not be a kleshavashagaha, a defilement power goer. So even in the, if you're in a great difficulty, you should not come under the power of the defilements. Just as in the same way as in as in whatever difficulties you are, your eye can't start seeing tastes. So let me read this once more before we finish this video. Mahatswapi hikritreshu narasan chakshuri kshate evang kritramapi prapya naklesh vashago bhavet. And that's it on this video.